What's up guys, back with another Fallout New Vegas video, and today I wanted to go over some of the companions or followers and figure out who is among the worst of the bunch in Fallout New Vegas. Now, before we start, this is meant to be more of an objective analysis of all six of the humanoid, as well as the two non-humanoid companions that the player can meet in New Vegas' vanilla game. So, while you or I may have our own favorites based on their own personalities, I will be analyzing all of the companions to determine which ones have the best and worst special stats, the highest and lowest maximum health, the best and worst perks, and so on. Also, I will be avoiding the DLC companions that are only available during their respective add-ons, so companions like Christina Royce or Dog or God uh, won't be featured in this particular video. This video will focus on the vanilla game companions only, but I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about who has the best as well as the worst special stats on average. Now, when it comes to the companion with the best special stats overall, it is definitely Edie, as the robot doesn't have a single special stat below 5, and if you add up all of Edie's ranks and special together, you should get 47 points. And the only companions that come close to this are Arcade Ganon, Rex, and Lily, because each of them have scores that are over over 40 points if you add up all their special stats. And only Arcade, Edie, and Lily have special stats ranked at 10, with Arcade specializing in intelligence, Edie specializing in perception, and Lily specializing in agility. And of these three, Arcade's intelligence is probably the least practical, however his other special stats never go below 4, making him relatively well balanced all things considered. As for the other companions, Raul, Veronica, Boone, and Cass, all of them have a combined special stats of 38 or lower, and of the four, Raul comes in first, Boone and Veronica are tied, and Cassidy comes in with the lowest combined special stats of the bunch. Now, with this said, Boone's lowest special stats are in both Charisma and Intelligence, however, all of the other special stats never go below 5, and given that these tend to be more combat-oriented, his lower special stat, on average, can be forgiven. You've sort of got a similar situation with Raul, who actually excels somewhat in Intelligence and has poor Charisma, but on average, the rest of his special stats are fairly decent. Now, when it comes to Veronica, she has good strength, endurance, and agility, however, she tends to be lacking when it comes to luck. And when it comes to Cass, she has a special stat rank of 4 in things like endurance and luck, which could potentially weaken her in combat. So, I would say, objectively speaking, Cass comes out on the bottom when it comes to her special. So, if you're looking for the character with the worst special stats, I would say that Cass is the worst. On the subject of companion default weapons, most of the companions start off with pretty good weapons. Boone starts off with a custom scoped hunting rifle that's pretty good. Arcade starts off with a Plasma Defender. Raul starts off with a Magnum, and Cass starts off with a Caravan Shotgun. And of these four, Boone's rifle has the highest damage per shot, while both Cass's Shotgun and Arcade's Plasma Defender tend to have the best damage per second. And of these four range-oriented weapons, Raul's Magnum tends to be the worst, as it has the lowest damage per shot and really only has better DPS than Boone's rifle. As for the melee companions, Lily's Vertebrate Blade and Veronica's Power Fist are about equal and both have about the same DPS. It's just that Veronica's weapon hits slower and harder for more damage. But, if you compare Raul's Magnum to Lily's Vertebrate Blade or Veronica's Power Fist, you'll find that the Magnum potentially has a better rate of fire than both of them. However, the Magnum generally tends to lose out on DPS over time, 
due to the fact that the Magnum has to be reloaded. Ultimately, I'm going to declare that Raul has the worst default weapon. However, with that said, he does have an okay secondary weapon in the form of his lead pipe, which should be superior to both Boone's machete and Cass's combat knife. The next thing we should probably talk about is who has the best and worst potential maximum health. Now, if the Fallout Wiki is to be believed, Lily has the best maximum health by far, clocking in at about 800 plus hit points. However, in the absence of companion perks, Cass has the lowest maximum number of hit points. Now, with this said, one of the perks she can obtain is called Calm Heart, and this can increase her hit points by 50, which would actually bring her maximum health above boons. So I would say, depending on how you look at it, it's probably Cass or Boon that gets the title for the lowest potential maximum health. Though with that said, Arcade and Raul's maximum health also leave something to be desired as well. Now, this brings us to companion perks. Of the eight companions, both of the humanoid and non-humanoid variety, Veronica and Cass debatably start off with the worst perks. And while Raul has perks that degrade the rate at which your equipment decays, Lily has a perk that enhances stealth boys, Boone has a perk that helps you aim a little bit better, and Arcade has a perk that allows you to heal more from all consumables, Cass has the Whiskey Rose perk, which eliminates the negative effects from specific alcoholic drinks, and Veronica has Scribe Assistant, which allows the player to basically have a workbench on the go. The reason these perks are bad is because Veronica's Scribe Assistant perk is redundant. After all, if you're also traveling with Edie, you're not really going to need to use Veronica as a workbench because Edie has a portable workbench and reloading bench provided that you have the Lonesome Road DLC. And as for Cass, Whiskey Rose is limited to only working with the specific Whiskey and Wasteland Tequila consumables. So despite the fact that the large Wasteland Tequila would basically be the same thing as Wasteland Tequila, it doesn't work with the Whiskey Rose perk. Plus, Whiskey Rose doesn't prevent addiction, it merely ignores the penalties, and once Cass leaves your party, you regain the addiction penalties that would normally occur. Now, while Whiskey Rose isn't particularly great, Cass does have an inherent perk that's similar to the Shotgun Surgeon perk that can greatly boost her damage with shotguns. So there's definitely something to be said for that. While we're on the subject of companion perks, it is worth mentioning that certain companions can gain additional perks. And of the ones mentioned, Cass has Calm Heart, which boosts her HP, and Hand of Vengeance, which can increase her damage with guns. And Veronica has either the Bonds of Steel or the Causeless Rebel perks, which either increase her damage threshold or improve her attack speed, depending on whether she decides to stay or leave the Brotherhood of Steel. Plus, Veronica also gets some additional perks provided that you have dead money installed because she can gain access to Elijah's ramblings and Elijah's last words, which can boost her potential even further. Aside from the characters that I just talked about, Raul has a choice between two different perks. You can pick full maintenance, which will boost the effectiveness of his regular maintenance perk that he provides to you, or he can get the old Valkyra perk, which will improve his fire rate. And there's also Rex, who can obtain one of three different perks depending on how you complete his companion quest. But of the four characters I just mentioned, I think that Rex's perks are the worst. And this is because you can take only one of the perks on offer. And unlike Raul's old Vaquero perk, which can potentially improve DPS, Rex's perks only boost damage, movement speed, or damage threshold, and thus aren't as good in my personal opinion. So in terms of gained companion perks, I would say that Rex is the worst in this area.
Okay, so now that we've compared each companion based on certain attributes, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on who the worst two companions are. After all, you can walk around with two companions at once, which would be one humanoid like Boone, Arcade, or Veronica, and one non-humanoid like Edie or Rex. Now, when it comes to the non-humanoid category, it simply has to be Rex. While Rex does have pretty good special stats, there isn't so much of a problem with him as much as Edie is just blatantly superior. After all, it's pretty hard to compete with the companion that increases the distance at which you can detect enemies and is a companion that you can merely upgrade by simply visiting specific locations and accessing logs. Rex, on the other hand, simply doesn't have perks that are quite as good as Edie's, and the companion perks that he can gain are sort of lacking in the sense that you can't achieve all of his potential upgrades like you can with some of the other characters. Another major flaw with Rex is that he lacks a ranged attack, and even the more melee focused companions like Lily and Veronica at least have a pistol or some kind of ranged weapon equipped that they can use if they get into a situation where they have to attack enemies from a distance. So when it comes to picking your non-humanoid companion, I would say that you should probably avoid Rex. Not only is Edie a better support character, but Edie also has better stats, a ranged attack, and has useful abilities like enhanced sensors, which can help the player avoid combat if they need to do that. In the humanoid category, it's admittedly more of a toss-up. After all, Cass does have some of the lowest average special stats, the lowest potential HP, and arguably has some of the lousier perks. That said, she is equipped with a fairly nice weapon and has her own version of the Shotgun Surgeon perk, which is actually a pretty amazing perk. Simultaneously, I find Veronica to be fairly lacking in some areas as well, because while Veronica's special stat average is better than Cass's is, she has the second lowest special stat average. And debatably, she also has one of the least useful starting companion perks, provided that you're using Edie. However, I would also say that Veronica can gain a number of fairly powerful perks, like Causal's Rebel, and both Elijah's Ramblings and Elijah's Last Words, that make her really powerful. And I think for that reason, I don't feel that I can pick Veronica. Assuming you actually take the time to acquire Elijah's perks from the Dead Money DLC, and she gets the Causeless Rebel perk from joining the Followers of the Apocalypse, I don't really see how she could be awful in 99.99% .99 of situations. I mean, maybe she'd still get wrecked by Cazadors, but if you have equipped her with good weapons and power armor, she would still be a force to be reckoned with the rest of the time. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and say that Cass is the worst humanoid companion in Fallout New Vegas. However, to be fair, I don't think she's drastically worse than any of the other companions to the point that you shouldn't even use her. Unlike Fallout 4, where there are clearly some companions that are just better fighters than some of the others, Fallout New Vegas' companions are pretty well balanced, and like I said, while Cass does have some undesirable attributes like low maximum health and some lousy perks, she also has some desirable attributes like a fairly decent starting weapon in addition to the shotgun surgeon perk equivalent. So I would say even if you picked her, I don't think you would really be that much worse for wear. At the end of the day, I'd say you should probably give Rex a pass, but otherwise the other vanilla game companions are all fairly good. And I suspect that because there are simply less of them when compared to Fallout 4, that the developers over at Obsidian had more time to make each one more balanced and more unique depending on your playstyle. So really, I would say that as long as you're avoiding Rex, any of the other companions are suitable. But alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.